everybody. It's Heather with the Glittery Bohemian. You can actually see my face this time. Looking a little rough, but that's okay. Uh, it's late, but I decided to start a tutorial on um, a matte cup today. I know there are a lot of products out there that everybody uses, um, especially the Final Sand. That's a popular one. Um, I am going to give you a tutorial today on a matte cup and show you what I use. It's a lot cheaper. It's like $2.50 and it works just as well. So I'm going to start with the very first step, which is very simple. Um, this is a 20 ounce hog dole from uh, Stainless Depot. And all I did was spray paint. I do a couple layers and you know, until I'm happy with it, smooth, smooth as I can get it. Um, I give it probably, this probably has two coats of paint on it. And um, what I used here was the Rust-Oleum Silver Lilac. It's It looks silver or gray in the picture, but it's actually like a really muted purple. It's really pretty. Uh, so I painted the cup couple coats of this and then what I did is I just put two coats of epoxy on it just to make sure that it was good and smooth and then what I'm gonna do now is add my decal on here so I will get that cut and then I'll record it for you guys hey guys we're back with the matte tumbler uh, we're to the decal phase now remember we had painted the tumbler with three coats of paint, spray paint, um, three coats of epoxy until it was smooth anyway. And I got three coats. I always recommend, like I said, at least two, probably three so that you don't wear it away when you mat the uh, tumbler. So I am up to that phase and I sanded it. I usually always sand before I um, add my decal. I use just a fine sanding block that you get from Walmart. And I just sand it down until it's smooth. And I'm ready to decal it. What I've got here is my decal. This one is savage but classy. Um, I created this decal. I get a lot of questions when I post a cup that I finish. I like to, I love to design my own SVGs for a lot of my work. But I had yet to figure out, because I have design space, how to get some of my earlier work out of there and turn it into cut files so that people could purchase them. Well, I finally figured that out. So what I'm going to do after this video um, in the comments, I will link my uh, Etsy store to my cut files. So if you want to purchase any of the files, please do. I'm super excited about it. And if there are any problems with any of them, Please do not hesitate to contact me because I want to make sure that you're happy with them. But um, this one, I what I'm going to do is place it in the store and I'm going to do this version here, which is on this cup. I'm also going to give you in the same set just the double frame so that you can use it for other things. I'm also going to give you just the wording if you don't want to put the frame on. And then I'm also going to give you the animal print. And I will, for the 20 ounce, um, what I normally do is I print out two. I can put the measurements in the file, in the uh, comments for you for a 20 ounce. For a 20 ounce skinny, I print out two of these and it's five inches this way and three inches this way. And that just, I just kind of join them together and I just kind of, I'll show you that in a minute. But I am going to put all these files in my Etsy store as a set for you to purchase. I'm super excited about that. I'm going to start putting some cut files out for people to buy because people always ask me, where can I buy this file? And I couldn't give it to them because I didn't know how. <laughs> so now I know how, so I'm going to start selling those as well. But anyway, moving on, um, I've got this file here and I've got it already on the, uh, transfer tape. I've got it ready to go. This is just plain, um, this is silver Starcraft. Starcraft. Um, I also use Oracle 651. I use them kind of, you know, I exchange them just interchangeably. 
Um, I think this one was Oracal, but they, they, they look very similar. I have this one sitting here because I have a set of three to make and I'm very OCD about the decals being like in the same spot. So I want them to look good together, even though they're probably going to three separate people. <laughs> but um, I have this one sitting here for that reason. So we are going to just take this off and I usually use the wet method um, to decal my cups. That way I can kind of move it around and it helps me get the bubbles out. It goes on without any bubbles. So if you have not heard of the wet method, what you need is just a spray bottle and you put a few drops of Dawn dish soap in it and water and you just spray your cup. I might move over here so I don't get it all over. Let's bring my cup where I want it and and I like to put my decals on for a right-handed person. I'm left-handed myself, but most people are right-handed. So you want to think if they're holding the cup, it's going to face outward. So I put my decal with the handle to the left. So I wet my cup. I'm going to peel this off here. Okay, and then you're going to spray the back of your transfer tape. So what that does is it allows your transfer tape to be able to be moved around. I like to get down on my hands and knees so that I can see, especially with this situation. I like to place this decal um, where the edge of the box that's flat to the ground kind of goes close to the handle, like right underneath the handle where the handle starts. I'm just going to look at it and make sure it's pretty flat. But if I wasn't happy with this, because I used the wet method, I could, I could move it around if I wanted to because it's wet. I think I'm pretty happy with the placement. It seems flat, so I'm going to press it down. And what you want to do with the wet method and again, this is going to keep you from getting bubbles under your letters. And I usually take just a paper towel or a coffee filter, depending on. Coffee filters are really good because they keep you from getting lint all over your cup. But there's no um, glitter on this one, so it's not going to get caught in there. So I'm not much worried about it. So I'm going to just use a paper towel. And I'm going to push the water out through the sides here. I don't peel it right away. I let it sit for a little bit so that the water can come out. And then I will peel it off. But the wet method is great because it allows you to kind of make mistakes. You can pick it back up, move it around. Because let's face it, I mean, that was, that was pretty lucky that I put that on straight the first time like that usually doesn't happen <laughs> so i just got lucky there but normally i have to move it a tiny bit so i'm just going to let that sit and then i'll get to work on the other part i'll show you how i do that like i said i do two five inch by three inch for a 20 ounce i haven't made a 30 ounce yet i'm about to so once I do, I can kind of add those sizes also. When I, when I um, sell the cut file, I can put the sizes for the hog dole in there. Of course, this would also work on a 20 ounce skinny without the handle. These measurements. Or you could change the measurements to whatever you want. I mean, these are just the measurements that I liked. Pieces that want to be stubborn there. There we go. Okay, now my placement for this one, and I'm spraying the back and I'm spraying the bottom. Um, I usually just line this up a little bit below. 
I start right at the handle right here. And I kind of line up the other ones, the other spots. This is where you really need the uh, wet method because you can kind of shift this around a little bit because it's not going to lay flat. It's, this isn't on a curve, but you don't really need it to be on a curve for this file. You just need to shift it just a tiny bit. See, and it just kind of lays. And I'm going to go in and push this down a little. To get the water out now the other side is a little more complicated but it's not really that bad if you ever put animal print on something a lot of people freehand the spots and I've done that before too but this is a little easier if you can lay the spots in patches I've done that before you don't even have to do them in halves but if you could lay them in patches it saves you a lot of like having to freehand every single spot I mean, there are times when I'll cut like a patch, like, you know, a little spot like this big and then put it somewhere and then kind of just line them up and make them look nice. It's a lot easier if you can patch them than um, trying to do them individually. So I'm going to let this sit for a couple minutes. And then I'm going to do the other side. Now the other side is going to be a little bit bigger and they're going to overlap, but that's, it's a very easy thing to deal with. So I'll show you. I'm going to just keep pushing this one a little bit and see if any water comes out. I probably will be able to come back and peel this off. So now the part that is kind of freehanded is the very bottom. And what I'll do is I will come back and I'll show you, I'll just cut a little piece of this and I just freehand place them on, on the bottom. It's, you know, that's just personal taste. You just put them where you want, but you know, you want some on the bottom cause it looks cute. Everybody likes the little surprise at the bottom of their cup. Okay. I'm going to make sure these bottom pieces are pushed down. It might be a bit of a pain when I come back. All right, now I'm going to pick this other piece up. Let me dry my whiteness here a little bit. This one's being difficult, and if you ever get that, just it's a lot easier. You see me rubbing the back instead of the front. You rub the front also, but then flip it over and get the back, and then you'll notice that those pieces that were being stubborn will come up. I'm gonna go slow with this one, because obviously this one is not feeling like cooperating. Okay. Now, this one we are probably going to end up cutting part off. That happens every single time, and that's fine. So I'm going to line up under here and then we will see what we can do. I like to just kind of place it close. So what I'm going to do here is peel part of this off. Let me see if I can get it to come off because it's wet. Let's dry it for a second. water out. I just want to peel off enough that I can kind of overlap it. Put this down so I can push. If you push on the transfer paper a little bit because it's wet so it will if you don't wait long enough will come up. Your decal will come up. And also with the wet method I let mine dry overnight just to make sure all that water comes out. But I peeled back enough here, you see, and I'm just gonna cut this off, this little piece of transfer tape. I don't wanna peel it all up yet. So I wanna give it a chance to dry. So I'll just trim off a little piece here. Now I'm gonna come over here 
And I'm going to take this and I'm just going to find a place that looks pretty good where they kind of, you know, line up the way that I want them to. And afterwards, you can also make adjustments to that part. Let me see if I like it the other way better. I'm sure we'll do it on this one. No, I did it this way. Sometimes I have to look back at my old work to see what I did. That's why you should also always take pictures of your work. <laughs> because I can't tell you how many times it's been the, you know, the first version of something I've made. And um, let me spray this again because it dried. And I have to go back and take a look at how I did something. I, re I, re I will remember the method a lot then I won't remember like oh geez what color did I use there like where did I place it you know that kind of stuff so it's always good to take pictures okay now see this one we have quite a bit left over you see how it ends here I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna try and do the same thing right here peel a little bit back of this uh, tape and cut just a little bit off. Probably should have done that before I did this part, but that's fine. off. I don't know what my scissors are. They have a piece of vinyl on them or something. Okay. So now we have enough that I can see to overlap. <clears throat> I just cut a little piece off there. Now this side is going to have a lot more. What I do is I just stop where I see that they will fit. Now you see, if you look closely, you can see where they're going to touch. So all I do I just take my scissors where I see there's not one, one is not going to fit. And I just kind of start cutting around it. Now I can use these still. So I'm not going to waste them. So I'm going to be careful. Try to cut around them. Whatever that was just came off my scissors. You come out of there. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to keep cutting around these pieces that don't fit. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to make some adjustments on pieces. None of those fit, so I'm just cutting around the ones. And then I'm going to push them down. And keep cutting right up to here. Now see, I have a little space here, but I can fix that super easy. This is where you start moving things around and you hand place things. But look at all the space I have filled already. You see, I didn't waste a bunch of time. And it doesn't, you can't see where you, where there's a line, where there's a seam, so that's good. So while I'm waiting on this to dry up a little bit more, I'm going to peel this top one and see how it's going. You don't want to leave this on overnight. If you do, you are going to have, you see it's coming off now. It's perfectly fine. You're going to have a sticky mess. So you want to just let it, you know, for a few minutes. And it's on there and I'm just going to dab it with a paper towel. Just a four. Like I said, if you're dealing with glitter, I suggest, definitely suggest a coffee filter. I have a bunch of them. Just being lazy right now. But you see, no bubbles. Wet method. Okay, a little Dawn dish soap, water. Spray your cup, spray the back of your transfer paper, push it on there, squeeze the water out, let it sit for a few minutes, peel it off. No bubbles, and you can move your decal around when you're doing that. Okay. So here... I'm going to check on the bottom here, see if we can peel some of this. 
It looks like it's happy enough to be peeled off too. See, we've been waiting for that long. I'm going to peel this one and it's still wet underneath. You see all the water? Again, just going to take my coffee filter or my paper towel. And if you use a paper towel that doesn't have a lot of lint on it, you really don't have to worry about it too much. And these are all down here really well and there's no bubbles. And let's see if this one's ready. This one might be a little testier because we just put this one down. So, squeeze a little more water out of there. And this is the one that I put down right next to the other one. I peeled a little bit of tape off. Sometimes if you scratch it, or scrape it with your scraper. Let me push it, sit it down here. We're, we're forcing this one to be in a hurry, so. But you can wait. I'm just trying to hurry for the sake of entertainment. Try to scrub everything else a little bit. I'm going to wait a few minutes because this is not being nice to me. It's not ready to come off. So I will wait. Shit. Try and go from this direction, maybe. Yes, it just didn't want to go that way. Of course, this little piece doesn't want to come off. I like talking to my cups. <laughs> As you watch my tutorials, you're gonna hear me talk to myself. <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite tools. It is a dental pick. Cheap old dental pick. I love it. I use it for weeding things. Um, any kind of situation like this where I need to pull something off of here, I kind of Push the vinyl down, make sure it's on there. Love it. I probably need about 10 more of them. Okay. See, this is being a little testy, but I can still I can still get it off of there. Because with the wet method, like I said, these are gonna move around if you don't wait long enough to peel the paper off. That one just came off on my finger, but look, oh, it's back on again. No big deal. <laughs> Very easy to move things around or put them down. That's a good thing about vinyl, really. If you want to move it, pick it up, move it. Make a mistake, rip it off, put something else down. I mean, even if you have seen a lot of times people put the wrong name or spell something wrong, take out your heat gun, heat up your epoxy just a little bit. Usually you can just peel that decal right up, sand it, put a new one down. I don't have to strip your whole cup for that. Okay, so we've got this one little tiny area. You see, we don't have... Any bubbles in our decals? I've got one little tiny one right here. Oops, and I'm gonna just push that out. That's it. Now, we've got these little spots here. Now, enter our little piece that we cut off. So I can just take these and kind of place them. Like, I think that one looks good there. Okay, great. <laughs> and there it is. It's, it's not a big deal. Just put them where you think they'll go. See, I'm filling in that space. Maybe one more. Let me get a small one. This one, maybe. Sometimes you have to cut them to get to them. Let's see. 
Yeah, this one I'm going to cut because I don't want to lose any of these other ones. Because what you can do now, sometimes you don't even have to cut extra spots. Sometimes, move this one off here. Now it's time for tweezers because this is sticking to my hand. I have to show you my favorite pair of tweezers. Mm. My favorite pair of tweezers, I love these. They're Famore. The name of the brand is. I don't know if you can see that. Um, they're super pointy on the end. I need to clean these off, but like they grab everything. I love them. So I'm going to use those to set this down. I find with a lot of tweezers that I have, they don't grab things well. I love this pair. So I'm just going to put this here. I think that looks like a good spot. Push it down. And pull it up. Let me see if I'm happy with this now. Sometimes what you can do here is, I don't really want to put another one here, but I think what I can do is kind of move this one over. Since I wet method, this is going to come up very easily. I'm going to take my dental pick. And I'm going to pull up this one. And I'm just going to move it over. My dental pick, push it down, make sure it's down all the way. See, I just moved one over so the whole spot is filled in now. Now I've got these leftover pieces. Now I can start kind of filling in my bottom and just do whatever I want to do here with what I've got left. This one came off on my finger, which is fine. I'll just put it down. Got my tweezers. If it comes off your paper, big deal. I like to put mine, some of them hanging over the edge. So I will push one down and have it kind of go over the edge so that it connects a little bit. Sometimes you could put the whole thing like this. Like I will cut this piece off right here probably. And I'm going to take this whole piece, put it across the bottom. Now here's another tip. This is a rounded area, but I don't care. I don't want, but I don't want bent uh, decals. So I'm gonna cut into my transfer tape. That doesn't matter. If I cut into my transfer tape and I push my decal down, I'm not messing up my decal. I'm just messing up the transfer tape. See, my decal is still flat. All I did was cut into it once. See, I didn't have to hand place all of these. I just cut a big spot. I'm not even wet methoding this part. I'm just kind of cutting it on the bottom. Scrub with my handy dandy dental pick. And make sure it's on there. I didn't even really sand the bottom very well. I did a little bit, but push it down a little bit more. is right there. Oh, it's a piece of transfer tape. Good thing I checked that. Don't want to be decaling that into your epoxying some transfer tape into your cup. This little piece is not being my friend. There we go. Okay. 
And we only have a few pieces left, so chances are I'm probably going to have to cut a few more. Likely. So I'm certainly it's not going to be enough for my taste to be filled up. That's for sure. But I'm getting there. Now I'm just kind of, since I put that big chunk in the middle, I'm just kind of placing the other ones just randomly. And again, I like to overlap a few here and there just so that it looks like it's coming over the edge. But I'm probably going to cut a few more. And then I'll just place them down and I'll be back and show you the finished decal cup. So we're back. I just added a few more extra pieces. I went back and I just kind of cut, kind of went into my um, square leopard print block and just sliced a piece off and printed that out instead of printing the whole thing. And then I just filled in the little areas on the bottom. So then we're going to go to the Next step, and we're finishing this as if it were an epoxy tumbler. So I'm going to epoxy this with as many coats as it takes for me to be happy with it so that it doesn't have fish eyes. It's really important there are no lumps, bumps, or fish eyes because when you mat this, you will be able to see any kind of imperfections. So I'm going to be off to epoxying this, and that's probably going to take... I would say three coats because I like to put three coats on it just to make sure um, a pretty big complaint is when people try to mat their tumblers they wear off some of the paint or some of the decal so you want to make sure you have enough epoxy on there because you're wearing it a little bit of it away so just make sure that you put enough there's no way you can get away with one coat if you do that you're definitely going to wear away some paint and decals so I'm thinking this one's probably gonna need about three until I'm happy with it so I'll be back then to show you the actual matte process hi guys when I last let off um, got off the uh, last step was decaling the cup so we got the decal done and I did three coats of epoxy the reason why I do three coats is because this process does um, take some of the epoxy off the cup. And if you do, you know, one coat, I usually generally never do one coat even over my decal. I don't feel like that's enough. Um, so I always at least do two. Well, my logic is if I'm removing epoxy, I want that third layer to make sure that I don't rub anything else off because I've seen in other uh, Matt Tumblr posts on Facebook and in places um, people will say that they tried it and it wore off the paint or it wore off the like the, the decal underneath so you need to make sure you have enough epoxy there that you're rubbing it's not gonna rub all that off um, so I do I did two coats over the paint and then I did the decal and then I did three more coats over that. I know that sounds obnoxious, but if I'm going to mat the cup, I don't want the, um, the decal or the paint to get worn off and then I have to start all over again. So I just play it safe and I do three coats of epoxy after the decal so that I don't rub the decal or the paint off. Okay, so here we are with that. Okay, so we've got the cup here, shiny, shiny, um, with our paint. Remember the paint was Rust-Oleum, I can never remember the name of the paint, Silver Lilac. Looks gray, but it is like a muted purple. And we added the decal here. Um, remember, I talked to you about the decal. Um, this is my own personal design. 
I was trying to figure out how to uh, turn them into files that I could put on Etsy to sell. So I am going to link the file to my Etsy store that has cut files on there that you can purchase. And this is one of them. So I added this decal on here and the whole set is on there. The uh, frame, the saying, and the leopard. So it's all on there and you can even get the frame by itself and you can get the saying by itself. It's all in that whole kit. You could buy the whole thing, the whole set together. Okay, so we've got this step done and all we need to do is mount the tumbler. Um, I do want to talk to you about some of the products that are available to map the tumblers. Uh, one of them is called Final Sand. I actually, when I heard all about this process, was like, I had the Final Sand in my cart. I was going to buy it. Um, but I didn't really want to spend the like $16 that it costs um, to get it. So... <laughs> I'm a little bit on the cheap sides. They also sell a deglosser. I got this from Lowe's and you know, being the glorious pandemic we're in, put it in my cart and went to curbside pickup. And this was, I think six, $7, a lot cheaper. So you could get like two of these bottles. The final sand tubes are really small also. You can get two of these bottles for uh, about the same price, a little less even. Um, this is a 32 ounce bottle. So this was option number two that I went and purchased. The third one, which I'm going to use right now, costs about two, between two and 250, depending on what kind of sale there is. It is Barkeeper's Friend. Now, some of my friends that are as old as myself or even older, when they first came out with flat top stoves, they told you to buy this to clean the stove because it is abrasive, but it is really, it's kind of like a soft scrub kind of thing, but it's even finer than soft scrub. So you put it on your stove and you clean the glass surface without scratching it. So this stuff is readily available in grocery stores, Target, Walmart, just run in there and get it or add it in your grocery order. Easy peasy. I pick up my groceries online could add it right in there. Okay. So I went, picked some of this up and that's what I'm going to use today. People always ask, well, is it the, um, powdered or the liquid? You want to get the liquid because it's, I mean, you can get the powder, but you got to mix it yourself. This is already done for you. So I would suggest getting the, the liquid. Um, and I don't take credit for this idea. I actually was, um, on Facebook and I saw it in a, uh, a live and somebody was using it and I thought that is genius. So that's what I'm going to use for the tumbler today. So let me just get you down here and we will start. And I'll let you see how I do this. It is not a clean process, but, um, you know, what is with tumbler making? Let me shift you a little bit. Okay, so we've got our cup here, and what I use, I also got this from Lowe's with when I got the degreaser. It's called a um, fine sanding sponge. They come in, I think, a set of six, and I've used this one a few times. It doesn't really matter. I cut this little piece because my cup has a handle, so this piece is going to let me come in here and move that in and out. Now people ask me about how do you epoxy the handle? Also, let me cover that topic while I'm in here. Um, it's the same. You spray paint it. Now I do spend a little extra time making sure I got the epoxy in there well, you know, and I cover the whole thing. I do this with my finger a few times to make sure it's coated. Uh, but as far as spinning it, you don't spin it any differently. The uh, epoxy self levels just the same as anything else when it's spinning it just spins like this and like normal and the epoxy just sets on its own so don't be afraid of using something with a handle i love them i love the cups with the handles they're super cute and they still fit in cup holders so they're really a pretty good seller so you might want to consider using the handle don't be afraid of it so we're going to take this cup and we're going to take this sponge and I am just going to open my barkeeper's friend 
Let me grab a paper towel because this is a messy process and it's going to kind of get everywhere. So you will want to be prepared for that. Probably just put a little bit down here. Okay. So I'm going to take this. Ooh, let me shake it. Step number one, shake your barkeeper's friend. Or it comes out like ketchup when you squirt it and it only gets red water. <laughs> okay. Ooh, we can just start scrubbing. Now, there's really no rule to how long you have to do this for. You kind of just eyeball it. I'm, I don't push very hard either. You do want to go up and down. You don't want to go in circles because that's going to just make weird circle, circular marks on your cup. So you just go straight up and down and kind of just... And barkeeper strand two to two fifty. The liquid. It's in a gold bottle. It's also, I think, thirty two ounces, like the glosser. I just don't see a point in spending sixteen dollars when I can spend a couple bucks. All right now. Again, you know, I'll go back and I will fine tune this and I'm just wiping this off. The paper towel right now. Let me show you. Here's another one that's finished. And you see, you can see the difference. The mat is starting to happen. It's not as bright and shiny anymore. So I will just do that again. It's, I mean, it's not really that difficult of a process. You just have to have a little bit of patience, but can be scary when you've never done this before when you did all this work to decal your cup and you're not sure what's going to happen so trust me it's it's just fine it works just fine i'll probably do this spot another couple minutes and then i will do the back and the bottom and make sure the handle I'll use my small piece for the handle. The handle probably takes the longest because you really do have to take your time. And make sure you get all the spots on it. I think I'm going to grab a turner arm real fast because it's starting to hurt my hand. So there's a little pro tip for you. There we go. Grab the turner hand, turner arm, much much easier on my hands. See, my knuckles were starting to get a little red there, so I would suggest just, and you can even throw it on your cup like that. I would suggest just um, doing that. Keeping it. I'm gonna work my way around. I'll use that small piece, kind of on the corners, on the nooks and crannies on the handle. You can use the bigger one on the main part of the handle. It's just like that underneath portion. And now here is where I could see really people complaining about losing part of the paint or the epoxy on the cup. Because I really feel like when people do handles, they don't epoxy the handles enough and they don't paint the handles well enough. You really, really need to paint your handle at least a couple coats of paint. And you need to make sure you get that epoxy on there. Like, see how my handle is like, it's not, you, know, you can tell it's epoxied. It's not like super thin. I feel like if you try to rub this in any way, shape, or form, and you've barely got any epoxy on there or paint, it is going to wear off your paint. So you really... 
do have to make sure that you are giving it enough paint and epoxy. And I can even kind of get in here with this piece. But I will go back with that tiny piece and fine tune it a little bit. Let's pour a little bit on here. On the back now. Now let me reiterate, I am not pushing very hard at all. I'm just scrubbing back and forth. It really does not require a lot of pushing, a lot of pressure. Now when you're done with this, there is no more sealing required. This is when you are completely done with your cup, like you are making a normal epoxy tumbler and you're ready to give it to your customer. You're completely done with your cup. All you want to do is matte finish it. Okay, so after you're done with this step, you don't have to do anything else to it. I will, you know, obviously, I'll just rinse it off with Dawn dish soap and water and dry it off. And that's it. And it's done. It's not going to wear off. really isn't as scary as I know there are a lot of people out there that are scared to do this my suggestion is I um, have tried it with glitter that's kind of a waste of time <laughs> um, it's it works really well with paint obviously and these like um, kind of antique finished paints it looks really good with and with the like metallic vinyl like this um, it looks good with I'm going to try a hydro dip with it because it'll kind of look like a stone. Um, I mean, I've seen a few different, you know, methods out there, but I wouldn't suggest the glitter route because, you know, I mean, most people want their glitter to be shiny. So you're kind of wasting your glitter. I would say it's going to work better with paint. go in I would go in here and I'm gonna hit this handle a little bit better but I will go back and fine-tune this a little bit that's looking pretty good um, just gonna wipe it with my paper towel a little bit that's kind of how I, I look for spots you know, that I didn't get very well and go back and hit them again. I somehow squirted my barkeeper's friend across the table here. Okay, see I got a couple spots. Like you can see the little shine at the bottom of the handle there. I'll go get that taken care of. Got a few spots over here, but you see we have mat. I'll go back. I'm going to go back and shiny. Shiny and mat. See if I can get a little better light. It's late here tonight. It might help a little bit. Here's your mat. There we go. Here's your shiny. And I will go back and I'm going to go back and just make sure I didn't miss any spots. I'll fine tune it a little bit. I'll give it a rinse off and then I'll come back and I will show you the finished, cleaned result. Here is your final product after you have matted using barkeeper's friend 
And this has been washed with just a little bit of Dawn dish soap and water. And it is ready. To be sent out. Thanks for watching. I'll be back at you with a new tutorial soon.